Hey, Bernhard. Yeah, How hi, are you? Tom. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Nice, so, nice yeah. to meet you. So my Voltra N5 just mm. came back from the dealer. I got a new software update, and as you can see, uh, I bought a new implement, a new cedar, and the dealer told me uh, with this new software and this uh, combination here, I can do section control with multi-boom. Uh, but actually, I don't know what this is. Uh, and that's the reason why you are here today. That's a, that's a good thing, Werner, that I am here, but it's, it's not so complex as you might think. Um, the multi-boom is just consisting uh, out of two machines, two, the two isobus machines, I presume, we have here. Let, let's go to the front. Um, and looking at this front tank here, it's, uh, it's isobus. Yes, I saw it with this uh, ISOBUS okay, connector. Good. That's uh, I can even see the IEF sticker on there. So we're having a fully ISOBUS combination of a front and rear machine. We uh, should be able to do multi-boom. And uh, as I see it here, and uh, uh, you have here your dosing units of the fertilizer, and it's transported all the way to the back, right? Yes, like you can see here. So this should be my, my fertilizer. Yeah. And does this mean that this is one boom? Or? Yeah, so uh, we're having it a physical split with your fertilizer discs and your seeder disc here. This will be your first boom and this will be your second boom of the eight seeding elements. Ah, okay. And now, the nice thing is if in the future we would have even an addition of granulates, you could uh, handle a third boom. So multi-boom can handle three booms. Ah, okay, that sounds, sounds good. So and now now I understand what this multi-boom yeah, so actually is. Yeah, so it's quite easy. Is. It's actually a double uh, section control. Uh, well, did the I even mentioned to you when they made the upgrade that you can now handle up to 96 sections. So, oh. so here you have eight and, and, and four, I b believe, in the front. You can uh, handle with your sprayer now even 96 sections. Oh, okay. There. Because I have a sprayer with yeah. single nozzle control uh, with more yeah, than... That would be a perfect uh, feature then for that. The, ah, yeah. okay. That's really good. So uh, for me, it was important because now the, the, the price for the fertilizer is very high and I wanted to, to just save some resources and uh, money. Uh, for me, it, it was important to, to be able to switch the fertilizer separate from the seed. So yeah. the first reason was to say, is to save the resources. Yeah, it, make, it makes sense, uh, Bernard, uh, to, to have it switch uh, on perfectly, no overlaps, no gaps, having your, your seat placed at the right time. Mm -hmm. Are you even weeding mechanically in your maze? Yes. Yeah, then, it, then it makes act, uh, act, uh, actually perfect sense to do yeah, it this uh, way. And the second <coughs> point was uh, because I want to place my fertilizer in a different depth and uh, the distance from the seed that yeah, we don't right. have damage and uh, it's a uh, good uh, it's better uh, for the uh, plants that they are separated and <laughs> even with with a shallower depth of seeding it can warm up quicker and yeah it will emerge faster yeah I, I think uh, you made a good decision to combine it with this uh, kind of technique let's go into the cap and see what settings we need to do to make it work perfectly yes yeah. sounds good yes. let's have a look you can go into the cap then and i will follow Oh, Bernard, uh, I can see you have your, already your Isobus uh, UT mask loaded. So do we have both the machines loaded in the Smart Touch Extend? Uh, yes, I have two masks here. I guess one for the, for the front tank and one for the cedar in the back. Right. Uh, but what is with my geometry for my guidance system? Okay, so first of all, uh, I can see already you have your guidance on your Smart Touch on the armrest. And the geometry is right. And that's one of the most important settings uh, to get it switched off and on properly with multi-boom. Uh, that, that the distances are correct. And the nice thing about Isobus is that they're automatically transferred from the machine controller to the guidance task controller. So uh, if you could check in that menu here somewhere, you could find the ISOBUS settings of the Azurite. And there you could go uh, into uh, settings that show you the geometry. And he, aha, here the one meter 78 would be the distance from their rear linkage to the actual seating disc. And the same goes then in the other menu for the uh, front tank where you measure the same distance, but now to the fertilizer disc. Okay, then I would say we uh, have to check this. We have to check this. Right. And then let's go out and have uh, some measurements. Okay, right. Way. Let's do that. Good, better. <laughs> let's check here the real linkage distance to the discs. Uh, to point out here, I can take this line. I will use the bricks uh, to point out. Would be this line here. So if you can take the stick and uh, put it to the draw point. Yes. Yeah, this is the best way. So exactly where the seed hits the ground here. 178. Yep. 
Okay, perfect. So And the same goes then for the fertilizer to check where the drop point is. So this is exactly coming out here at this disc. Okay, so it would be the 85. Great. Okay. Let's check that in the, in the cab then. Okay, Ben, let me go in first and I can show you directly on the terminal. So, here we are. Let's look now at the armrest terminal where we see our guidance already with the two booms. You have the four and eight elements. And on the right hand side, your settings for uh, section control. So, just click on it. You open up the sections like you, you the, the menus like you're used to. These are the four tabs uh, talking about the uh, section control. Um, on the left hand side here, this is the most important one basically mm -hmm. because here it shows you now the, the differences between uh, uh, the previous uh, section control setup and this one with multi boom because. Yeah, it's showing now on the top Solitaire 23 with this drop down. If you click on that, there you can see you have two machines actually where the settings are for. Okay, so two machines, that means uh, two booms. Yeah, you have basically two chapters of settings here now. One for the front machine and one for the back. And then the settings below, for now I would say, uh, let's take the Azerit. Um, you can see then these four tabs would be the same. Now we have for Azerit with this individual settings for the main seater. And if I would switch back to the Solitaire, these settings would all apply for the Solitaire. Okay, so just to sum it up, I can do all the settings independent for from each other. For yes, each machine. and you can even decide whether or not this machine should be uh, used for section control, yes or no. So mm -hmm. independent front or rear and, uh, instead of uh, a general on and off. Okay, and uh, the other information is just uh, for my information, how many that's sections and... Uh, the exactly. Okay. Th that's coming from the task controller from, in this, uh, in this case, from, from the, the maze seater in the back, the eight elements with the 75 centimeter row spacing. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, so, let's go to the second tab here. Here it would be whether or not your section control in total is on or off and whether or not you would like to use it on a virtual headland. Yeah. Uh, like you know, you have already the functionality you use probably. Yes, so uh, that is the function that I can uh, work the inside of my field at first, then the section control will switch on yeah. and off uh, on the headland. On line. a virtual line yeah, that yeah, you draw. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But that's, that's the same here, mm -hmm. but now per machine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then the third tab is uh, actually the also uh, quite conventional with your overlap settings of section control. <laughs> In field, on the boundary, uh, your driving direction, and I can see here something that is already set. Did, did you yes, set this? I played a, uh, around a little bit because I do mechanical reading, for, and mm -hmm. I thought if I put a value for uh, like 38 centimeter in there, uh, the section control is switching off a little bit earlier. Yeah. Uh, in, Correct for the headland. Correct because if you put in a minus. And that's something a lot of people don't know. Then you can actually create a gap so your rows on the headland are not touching each other. Yes, that was my intention. Okay, okay. Yeah. And some people intend to have overlap and then you would have the 38 plus. Okay. Yep. Good. Yeah. So, and the last one here would have to do with your overlap on 0%. So this outside is, uh, if I have not an RTK or not an accurate signal, I can give an additional tolerance. A little bit more margin on the uh, outside sections or yeah, the outside elements yeah. in this case to yeah to move a little bit into worked area be before it switches on and off too nervously. Okay, yes, okay, that's so, also clear. Um, the last setting then would be the delay times, and this is actually the, the most important one on top of the geometry settings that we did, the measurements, mm -hmm. uh, because this actually uh, decides uh, the, uh, the moment of switching on and off. So you can see here the black values coming via the task control of the implement, so what the manufacturer said, how long it takes, between the command and the actual shutoff. And the below ones are the, on the uh, added times on there um, for uh, this tractor to react. So it could be that this tractor is a little bit faster reacting than maybe uh, your other tractor because they have different processors and, and the way the CAN communication works. Mm -hmm. The good thing is we only have to do this once. So once we did this today and next time you hook it up, this setting still apply. Okay, okay? That, that's important to know because ne the next time if I connect this machine again, then all these settings will be stored in. in exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Now, and it's not so hard uh, if we will drive out in the field now, then we could do uh, a test and we do a dry run where we touch or uh, cross a worked area and we just fill in the measurements here whether or not too late or too early and the wizard helps you through it finding the right setting and doing the calculation. Okay, that means we drive to the field and I just have to measure if everything switches correctly and if not I just type in 
um, the value yeah. I measured, and then the system calculates the, the yeah. Right he, he does uh, the, the adjustment of, of the delay time here by himself. Okay. So the outcome. Yeah. Perfect. Speaks for itself. So I, my uh, suggestion would be we drive to the field now and we actually do a measurement and then we know if these settings are right. Yes, but all in all, it's not so complicated. Oh, it's not so complicated. So it's, uh, I think it's uh, very easy to use. Yes, then let's drive. Let's go. Okay, Bernard, uh, we're now in the field. I would just uh, suggest that you do your normal run like you always start, just in general to start uh, checking the section control. And once we do the normal passes backward and forward, and then we will go out of the cab and, and check the real placement of the seat. Okay, sounds good. So I have this part field here and usually I start uh, working on the headland. So I make uh, four passes around the field and then I drive in the inner part of the field. So I will just start. That's fine by me. Let's go. So the guidance system is working as you can see. And also uh, now the, the covered area is... Yeah, that's probably uh, switch and uh, mod. Okay. So now I can see uh, I have two booms in my terminal and uh, the, the fertilizer and the seed is a separate uh, mapping of the, of the worked area, is it correct? Yeah, that's correct. So actually you could see when it would have been uh, further apart, but obviously it isn't, but that they have both different colors, yeah, slightly uh, different colors of green. Okay. Uh, there is uh, something else that you could see if you would manually switch off one of the sections uh, uh, by hand in, in the Lemkin operation, then it would turn to yellow and stay off all the time. So that's that's what a yellow indication means. Ah, okay. So um, now I have my three passes. This is a small part field here at uh, this field. Um, and now we are heading to, uh, to the headland that is already worked. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, actually now section control should switch off. Uh, yeah, for this is the first time that we can properly see where we are heading, heading it in 90 degrees on the headland if it's switching on and off properly. So what I would do is just drive straight into the work area and there you stop and then we get out of the cab and we measure the distances if, if they are correct. Okay, and do you recommend to drive with the cruise control when doing this test? Of course, uh, test? just keep on driving constantly because uh, uh, as soon as you start slowing down or, or even accelerating, then you mess up more or less the switching time. Okay. So uh, the better you drive constant, the better it is. Okay. So now we are heading yeah. to the headland. Yeah, just as soon as you are fully in the worked area, you stop. Yeah, okay, you can see now. it switching. Yeah, yeah, you can stop. Leave the machine in the ground. It's good for us to, uh, as a reference, where the seat should be placed. Okay, yeah. perfect. Now the booms are white. That means they are switched we off. Switched off. We okay. can get out. Yeah, and we have a measuring. Have a measurement seat. So here is your headline. Should be here. So that, that's exactly what we what we adjusted in the terminal. Perfect. Okay. That's perfect. Very okay. good. So but what about uh, the fertilizer? Yeah, of course. That's a hard part to find uh, in the, into the soil. So I have a trick for that. Just look what uh, what we can do to measure that. You just take off one of the the hoses of the drop point here, and this is good that it is actually easy to take it off. Of the hoses off. 
the fertilizer and we leave, the, we leave it hanging here, it also matches almost the, the, the dropping point so you get an indication. Okay. Yeah, let's see, Ben, where you started. You can see the fertilizer there. Here's your headland line. So it's spot on. Yeah, that looks oh. really amazing. Very good, very good. Okay. okay, let's put the hose back on and then you can go. And now we are uh, getting closer to the already worked area. And now the section should also switch off here. Yeah, when you are overlapping to the side, uh, also that has to do with the settings that you did in the background and the tolerances, how much you should be overlapping into the sideways worked area. And it has to do with, first of all, your, your uh, overlap setting in percentage. And secondly, you could put on top of that the tolerance for the outside section if you put the overlap on 0%. Okay, that looks really good. So that means now we have an overlap from each section for 100%. Uh, percent. But yeah, then the side tolerance that yeah. that is ignored yeah. and uh, the complete seating element should be in overlap before he switches off. And that, that keeps him from being too nervous and switch on and off when, when the, the way line is not uh, fully straight. Okay, Ed, that, that looks really, really yeah. good. So that means now I have way less overlap and also for... Yeah, well, this, this is why you need this kind of features to save money in the end, because now you can see that you're actually working the, the, this last triangle that is left to its maximum precision. So uh, that's why we do this. Yeah, Fof. perfect. Looks great. So uh, now in the second half of this field, uh, we would like to show you some other nice feature because it, you did that field in a conventional way with three passes surrounding but here I could say you work with the virtual headland and so if you zoom out now in the map and you see your complete field and when you work with the virtual headland you can see the light blue line and the blue line from the boundary the light blue line here would be then your virtual headland and we can use that to switch the section control Okay, uh, I already created this uh, headland here on this side of the field uh, because I need a headland on this uh, side and you say a uh, section control can also switch on and off on this virtual headland. Yes, exactly. So here on the diagonal line that we will face when we, we head for the headland on the other side, then it will switch off on that blue, light blue line. Okay, and where can I switch it on? Uh, in the settings of uh, section control. Okay. And on the second tab, there it says automatically uh, section control on, and then in the middle there you can see this uh, this this box where you can select virtual headland. Ah, okay, this is the headland mode. Yeah, perfect. So that's it. that's it. Or the one thing that you can adjust it better to to, to fit the field circumstances that you use individual headland segments so that you can adapt whether or not you want to have surrounding headland or only on the top sides of the field. Okay, yes, that I, uh, that's uh, clear for me. I already uh, created the headland segments. Then let's try it. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, so now we're heading for the headland, close to the headland, so you can see the light blue line coming. Booms are still active. So we just wait and see what happens. It's a nice, almost 45 degree angle. So should have proper switching here. Okay, now we are crossing the virtual headland. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, um, you already hear that you're crossing the headland line. Okay, perfect. That uh, looks really good. So now let's try if it also uh, works uh, when we go inside uh, the field. Yeah, if you drive in again, it should do the same thing. That means I can uh, activate my cedar even now in the headland before we cross uh, the headland yeah, line. Well, it will not switch on before we uh, pass the line. Okay, uh, then the I, virtual headland, yeah. I activate my cedar, yeah, my cruise see, control. The cedar is down, but they're still switched off. And of course the big advantage is that now you don't have to drive over already uh, seated area now you can do the headland as last 
Yeah, yeah that is perfect for, for seating a uh, grill yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah it looks, looks really, really good. Yeah, yeah so you see if you take, you know, make some effort to adjust it all uh, to, to the settings you want, then once it's set, it's a really good feature. Perfect. Bella, what's good to see now is that, of course, you can see the section control here being active and green, but you can also use the uh, Isobus UT of Lemkin to see that the elements are switched on and off. Because of the eight elements of the cedar, they also are uh, shut down in, in that uh, visual um, uh, display there. And same goes for the front tank. You will see there also the individual dosage elements being switched on. Okay, now uh, it's switched off again, and I see yeah. it here my uh, cedar control in the UT. Yeah. Uh, that arose or that of course corresponds, and that's the nice thing of Isobus that all these terminals work together and these displays, uh, these virtual displays uh, exchange information on the, on the same go. Ah, okay, that's that's really cool. Okay. Okay, so Bernard, uh, that's all. Uh, that's to it. So it's basically, if, if you if, if you are familiar with the settings, it's not so hard. So uh, I think this uh, this is now clear for you. Yes. Thank you.